Today we are fixing our horrible laundry room on a budget and making it a little bit more functional. I'm Russell. I'm Lindy. I'm Ray. And we're with Love Crate Celebrate and we are in our laundry room. And I need to fix the lot. We do need to fix. We need to fix a lot of things in here, hey? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we've been living with this messy kind of unorganized laundry room for a very long time. It still will not be perfect when we're done this because we can't hide like the furnace and the water heater completely without spending a lot of money. But we're at least gonna put some functional storage in here, make the sink look nicer, make the actual laundry space look nicer, and hopefully that will make a big difference. We will do this whole room and then we will share the entire budget for the space and what we spent when we're done. Let's get to work. High fives. This may be the start of our laundry room renovation because miraculously, we found all of the Ikea pieces we need at one store. <laughs> but where is that one store? In Calgary. Yeah, and that's 14 hours of driving round trip. Hi, well, I will order these, and I think if we do the pay and collect or whatever, that will be the most efficient, and then I'll get there tonight and pick it up tomorrow morning. That's crazy. Once we knew for sure what cabinets we were picking up and using, we were able to finalize some design decisions for this space. The bulk of our budget is on this cabinetry from Ikea, so we're definitely gonna be adding storage above this washer and dryer unit as well as a counter. And then on the other side, we'll be adding some storage above, underneath, and beside a new sink. And then we have to deal with this electrical, which although safe, is a bit of an eyesore right now. Originally, I was thinking of doing white cabinets for this laundry room space to keep it fresh and clean. But when these walnut finished cabinets were all available at Ikea, we just jumped on that idea and I built our mood board around the walnut. To keep costs down, we're using some leftover black tile from a previous project and we're gonna be building our own laminate countertops with this thin laminate material. And because we always have sustainability in mind, we're also including some eco-friendly laundry products. The first thing we did to start fresh was completely clear out this room and paint all of the walls white. And you can see that Russell already constructed a bit of a temporary cover for that electrical panel. Okay. Hey YouTube, you can see that Lindy throws things at me. So if I'm sad for the rest of the video, <laughs> it's because my head really hurts. <laughs> Next. Hey buddy, can I use your car? Yeah. Okay, there you go. Here, send this to mom. Is that my delivery? Yep. Thank you. you. We got these cabinets installed here. This is where our sink is gonna be. So there's five cabinets. We have the pantry unit, these two ones that have the doors that open like this, and then the cabinet for our sink. Um, the next step here is to install some cover panels just on the side, and then we can start doing countertops, and then finally backsplash.
for countertops. I've seen countertops get built before, and I thought I could do that. Lindy thought we should just buy countertops because it'd be faster. I don't know if that's true, but hopefully I can build them and hopefully they look great so that I am right. <laughs> As we mentioned before, we are going to be building our own laminate countertops for this project. Countertops would be really expensive and even laminate for this space would be upwards of $1,200. So we knew we could do it a lot cheaper and we decided to try and DIY it ourselves. We are using two sheets of 3 quarter inch MDF glued on top of each other for the countertop. But since we didn't want to buy a whole nother full sheet of MDF, we're actually just putting some scrap pieces together on the underside and one wood piece at the top for where our countertops will join to make some extra stability there. Okay, so you think? Sink. It's like charcoal. It will actually probably look gray against the, the black, black countertop. countertop and black back. But it's a nice big. Did it come with a black sink. drain or what did they say? Uh, I don't know what it comes with that. But okay, that's nice. I need it. Did you? Oh, kitchen, the old faucet. Kitchen faucet. I think that will look good in there, though. So imagine this is your big laundry room sink. That's, that's big enough, deep. right? Cool, I like the strainer. That is cool actually. <laughs> and then you can also drain like a really small batch of noodles in there. <laughs> well, I think that's gonna look good. Once we had all of the countertops measured and cut, we could move on to doing the laminate. And we did attempt to do it on the first counter and had a bit of a setback. So I finished this last night and brought it in and I was really happy with it. And then this morning when I popped in, I noticed that I have a bunch of scoring on here for my bit. So I'm gonna have to fix just this piece and maybe the side piece. You probably can't even see it from the camera there, but I will do a close person. up shot. It's noticeable in person. Like to me, it's, I think people would leave this, but to me, we're not gonna leave it. I think I can do it with, swap it out, or I could just glue a piece in the front and your lip will just be a bit different. But. Yeah. I mean, oh, this looks amazing. Oh, really good. The countertop in place and the sink, like, mm -hmm. makes me feel like this is the right decision. We looked it up this morning and we can get, we're gonna try a different router bit, but it's gonna take like a week to get yeah. here. It's kind of annoying, but it is what it is. Hopefully our new router bit saves the day. Saves the day. The new bit that we needed finally arrived. It's a solid carbide flush trim bit and it is made specially for laminate. We have a test piece we're gonna try on before I um, go on our actual countertops and see how this works. We wanted to cut and attach the side pieces first so that the top pieces would overlap those edges. We cut all the laminate on a miter saw or our table saw and then attached everything with cement glue. We put contact cement on the back of the laminate and on the countertop surface, waited 15 minutes and then glued them together. We had purposely cut the laminate pieces too wide so that we could router the edges after and get a nice perfect fit on the countertop. In routering these top pieces, we had previously scratched the edge of the laminate with our router bit, but now with the new router bit and a couple other tricks to keep the surface smooth, we were able to cut that large piece of laminate without scratching the previously installed piece. Very nice. Like it was always there. I think it was meant to be. 
They fit perfectly. Good measuring. I only forgot about an inch and a half halfway through and I had to add a piece that I caught it at the right time, so. You'd never know now. That would have screwed me. I don't have an inch and a half of play. <laughs> so the next step in here is doing this backsplash. Is that what you call it? Do you call it backsplash when it's a laundry room counter? I mean, technically it's protecting you from splashing from the washing machine coming up and, or out, up and over. <laughs> yeah, backsplash. Anyways. We're tiling the wall, because it's going to be aesthetically pleasing, whether it's necessary or not. And this is the tile we're going to be using. This is actually the same tile that we used in our playhouse a couple of years ago. And it comes on this nice little mat. Perfect. But I thought, hey, we could take it off the mat and do a fun, different pattern. What I hear is, hey, how can we make this take longer and be more difficult? <laughs> we are going to stack the tiles vertically, horizontally, horizontally up the wall. So that's gonna look really good. I'm excited about that. And instead of using thin set, we are using muscle bound roll to attach everything. So this is like really a sticky sheet that will go on the wall and the tile should just stick right on there. And then we're still gonna grout it all after with a black grout to keep everything cohesive. First, we added the muscle bound sheets to the wall and then put the tile on. We took some time with that first tile and the first row to make sure everything was gonna be nice and level going forward. And then it all went very quickly. We used the wet saw outside to cut any tiles to go around walls or outlets and made sure those tiles were completely dry because wet tiles do not stick to the muscle bound. The final step of this renovation was grouting that tile and when the grout was clean, we were ready to put the room back together. As a reminder, here's what our laundry room looked like a couple of weeks ago and here's what it looks like now. And here is our full budget breakdown for this reno. We also included the cost of going to Ikea because it was an unexpected cost and the value of all of the free to us items that we used in this space. We have a finished laundry room. I wish we would have done this years ago. I know, the functional storage. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed our pretty budget-friendly makeover. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let us know in the comments below. And again, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that bell so you don't miss out on future DIY and home renovation projects on a budget.